Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy, and I mean obliterate, the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as well as that ding-dong Taco Bell notification bell so you can be part of the A-gang and so that we can keep on climbing even further beyond the 1300 ladder. We have just achieved our best finish ever to an event. 10th place with, of all things, Centurion. And I, I was calling up Valley D, our homie, our brother from another mother. I'm like, man, I appreciate all the long night Discord calls and play testing and busting my balls for the bad plays and stupid tech choices I try and make. Shout out to everybody in the Jacksonville Yu-Gi-Oh! community for the congratulations. Thank you to Raymond. Shout out to Tino. Shout out to Bradley. Shout out to everybody who's just been giving me kind words and positive affirmations on this finish. I really appreciate it. I've been playing the game. Actually, December marks 16 years of me playing the game competitively. I play the game longer than that, but competitively, uh, it's been 16 years now. So what better way to celebrate 16 years of playing the game that I love, that I've played since I was a kid, with a 10th place finish, the best I have ever gotten. So if you didn't keep up with my community post, then you wouldn't be aware of the decks that I played against. So we are gonna go through those real quick, but you can look at my community posts on my channel to get a little bit more in depth of how each matches went. And I'll of course be talking about them as I go through the video. So round one, we beat Unchained, we 2 owed him. Round two, we lost to Chris LeBlanc, we went to three games. And my nerves were really killing me this event. I don't know why. I even told myself after Chris LeBlanc used Imperm on me to not play Desires in the Imperm column, I decided to play it in the Imperm column like an idiot. Same thing with round one, I was making like stupid plays and just my nerves were getting to me. I don't know why, that's never been a huge issue as of recent, but it was for this event for some reason. Uh, round three, we swiftly 2 owed Flunderies. Shifter doesn't really hurt us, neither does Droll. Round four, we swiftly 2 owed a Sinful Spoil Sprite player. He activated the anti-spell on me in game two, and I had an established board, and I'm like, that doesn't really hurt me. It's not a bad tech. I actually thought about it afterwards. I'm like, that actually kind of hurts, but it didn't really do nothing to me. Uh, round five, we beat Dragon Link of all decks to play against. Uh, Droll really shuts the deck down. We went to three games. I King Calamity in game three. It was great. Uh, and then we won at table six. Uh, in round six, we got a quick 2-0 on Simple Spoil Rescue Ace, which was very nice. Round seven, we lost to Infernoble. I shotgun the Crimson Dragon when he had no board. I activated Centurion Phalanx on his Fenrir, proceeded to make a Crimson Dragon activate the effect. He had no cards on the field. He imperm me. We proceeded to lose. That never should have happened. I should have been 6-1. and one. I started off 1-0, then 1-1, and then I should have had five wins in a row instead of uh, four. And then round eight, we finished out 6-2, and two, beating another Simple Spoil rescue ace so that was all of our matchups but let's go ahead and dive on into this deck profile again like i said i made some stupid plays i should have been x1 going into the last round instead of having to sweat it but at the end of the day it all worked out so let's dive on into this deck profile so yes people had to read my cards all day which if any time someone has to read your cards you might as well give them a big old hug and uh, just thank them for not knowing what your cards do because i guess people thought my deck was bad or they were sleeping on it because just people thought it was King Calamity Turbo, I guess. Meanwhile, I'm playing 15 hand traps and I'm winning. So, uh, three Primera. Uh, this is your Stratos of the deck. Uh, if it's treated as a continuous trap, your level five or higher Centurions can't be destroyed by card effects. Uh, they're during the main phase. So, like, one of the judges who watched my last round game uh, said, oh, so they're quick effects. He's like, damn, that's really broken. Um, I guess you could call them quick effects, even though they're continuous traps. But, yeah, it's your Stratos of the deck. It gets you to stand up if you don't already open it. If not, it gets you to bonds or failings. It's really good. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Trudeo, which gets easier to get to once we get Bonfire, because this is a Pyro, which is hilarious. Um, a lot of different attributes in this deck. You play Light, Dark, Emmet Six is an Earth. Um, yeah, you use this one to usually get to uh, this and then Primera, or if you have, already have access to Primera, then you use this to put an Emmet Six from your deck in the back row. So yeah, it's a really solid card. Uh, I might as well just put them in the middle here. And then we're playing two copies of Emmet Six. We're on Desires, so you don't want to banish just your one of copy. Um, opening this isn't terrible because during the opponent's turn, if it's in your hand or grave, you can summon it by putting a Centurion from your field into your back row. So it's not a terrible card, but it's mostly just there to extend your plays in the level 12s. And that's all for the main deck monsters of the Centurion monsters. Uh, the rest is just hand traps. Uh, three Ash, one of which turns out it's bent. I got deck checked in the last round. It's bent. Uh, it was just a warning, but... Yeah, one of these out of the rarity collection was slightly bent, like right 
here. Not this one specifically, but one of these. So, yeah, it, it is what it is. Uh, it was it was really unfortunate. I got to get me a new Ash. Um, three copies of Valor. Valor is good. Uh, three copies of Droll because Droll is good. Oh, whoops, that's just the Moonlit Chill. Just kidding. Um, but there is supposed to be three Droll here. I don't know what the third one is. It's probably somewhere in here. But three Droll, and then we are playing the one, two, three copies of Moonlit Chill. So Moonlit Chill was interesting in that here's the third drill so moonlit show was interesting in that it was very niche but it was also very good because of the fact that it hits things on summon so and of course people had to read it all day because ain't nobody out here playing moonlit chill um but moonlit chill uh it's not just a valor but it's whenever the opponent special summon so if they special summon on the summon you activate moonlit chill pitch it uh, doesn't have to go to grave like Valor. You target the special summon monster. It's effects are negated until the end of the turn. If during this turn, while it's effects are negated from Moonlit Chill, it's sent to the graveyard, or excuse me, if it leaves the field, the opponent takes damage equal to the monster's attack. So um, uh, in the Dragon Link matchup, the opponent, my opponent tried to use Magnum up three times, and I hand-trapped him three different times. First time he summoned Magnum up, he goes effect. I go uh, Valor. Second time, he summons it back from grave. Magnum up effect, imperm. Third time, he summons it back from grave. Magnum effect, Moonlit Chill. I was not letting him get to that Druid Swarm to hit Primera or Trudea, and it was just hilarious. I was able to negate it three different times. He actually called to judge because I was the turn player, so he wasn't sure how the effects chained. But this is always going to be chaining too, because the opponent has to declare on the summon of Magnum or even like on Dark Witch, which happened the following round against Rescue Ace. Uh, that they're activating the effect. So this will always be chain link two, usually, unless like, you know, you're hitting a turbulence or a hydrant, something that doesn't activate on summon. So card is really good. Uh, the damage only came up once against Infernoble when uh, I bricked on five hand traps. Um, and on like the second or third hand trap I played was Moonlit Chill on his I Sold. Then he linked off with it to like make a little knight. So he took 1600. But other than that, the burn damage never really came up. Spoiler alert, we're also playing Impermanence. Uh, for the spells. We are playing three copies of Stand Up Centurion. One of these is bent in the top left corner. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. Maybe it's this one. Um, yeah, I, I, th this deck has brought me nothing but bad luck in the regards of trying to get it built, right? Like, my Crimson Dragon didn't come in the mail in time, so luckily a local player here in Jacksonville lent me his, and I was very thankful and grateful. Um, but, like, b between that, my Ash Blossom getting bent in the last round, I think because someone shuffled my deck too hard, uh, too aggressively whatever and then the stand-up centurion being bent the night before and it's like uh, so many negative things surrounding this deck i had no idea how well i was gonna do and then lo and behold i get 10th place and it maybe could have been better if i didn't just like act like a total momo and activate crimson dragon when my opponent has no cards on the field so it, it is what it is but the stand-up is a, a really broken card fun fact uh, for those of you who don't know, if this is up on the field and you have a Centurion monster in your back row and you have none in your monster zone, this still can't be destroyed by card effects. Because the way that it's ruled, at least the time you're making this video, even though a Centurion monster in your back row is treated as a continuous trap, its original type is technically a monster card. Therefore, you control a monster card, therefore stand up can't be destroyed by card effects. So, I could be wrong on that, maybe a different ruling comes out later, but at the time you're making this video, as far as I know, that's how it's been ruled. It never came up at the regional, but it's just something to know. Um, Three copies of Emblama. This card is insane. I actually beat, uh, what was it, my round six, seven opponent um, just because of the fact that I top decked Emblama. And I actually kind of misplayed a little bit in that match. I actually could have played a little bit better looking back on it. But I top decked Emblama, and all I had was Ash in hand, and Emblama got me to my full board. Uh, it's funny because of the fact that people didn't know what my deck did. I was actually able to kind of plan moves around the fact that assuming my opponent would misplay. Like, there was a moment where I had uh, Stand Up Centurion on the field, uh, and I had, uh, I think it was Emblama, and I went Emblama for Trudea in the back row, activated Trudea to summon it, increase its level by four, activated Trudea's monster effect to put itself in Primera in the back row, and he had a Fenrir up, and he goes activate Fenrir effect. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, it's only going to benefit him if he hits the Stand Up or Trudea, which I don't care about anyway. And he tried to hit Primera. So I chained Primera and summoned it. It's now no longer a Continuous Trap. It's a monster card. It doesn't get banished by Fenrir. So people were just misplaying all damn day. Like they, uh, my round one opponent told me he side decked in Droll. Droll doesn't do anything to this deck. You're denying me at most the draw one off of Ligadia, and I don't care because I'm going to King Calamity you on the next turn anyway. Which, fun fact, I lost all my die rolls except for round four. So round one through three, lost the die roll. Round four, one. After that, I lost all the other die rolls. So we were just going second all day and just hitting all the hand traps. Like against Flunder, I opened up Ash and Imperm in game two, and that was a swift 2-0 because Flunder's an easy matchup. 
Um, like I made final Sigma game one and I was at Tikaboo. Um, and game two, he went extrav, I went ash. And then he summoned Rovina, activate the effect, and I went imperm. He's like, well, goddamn. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was really comical. Like, that that's just what happens when you're playing 15 hand traps. You just got to open up what you need. Um, Bonds, it's a one of. It's really good. Um, not much else to really say on it. Uh, two Desires, uh, it only ever came up twice, excluding the time that um, I played against Crystal Blanc in the imperm column because I'm a Momo. Um, both times I used this, I banished like seven or eight hand traps. The rest of the stuff was like small engine pieces that I didn't really care about. So like I had all gas, just all engine in my deck. This was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and then we are, of course, since we're playing Desires, we're maxing out on three copies of Talents. Uh, I'm sure the rarity difference is going to bother somebody. <laughs> but three Talents was insane. Uh, there was a time, one of my matches, where I summoned Pankratops, uh, tried to enter battle phase. He activates Masquerade in the main phase. He makes like Little Knight or something. And like he, he starts doing plays. It makes my talents live. I play talents and I just start plussing. Like I think I used it to take his little knight or something. Uh, it, it, it was just disgusting. Talents is an amazing card in this deck, especially when like people do things like play droll when it doesn't really affect you or shifter, which doesn't even really affect you all that much. Uh, and then you can just go talents and rip a card out of their hand and proceed to make your board. Like it's it's just it's insane, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one copy of terraforming because ugh, we want to play four field spells. And then for the traps, I already mentioned imperm earlier. Imperm's a god card. Uh, three copies of Tikaboo with the one Phalanx. So Tikaboo, you play a bunch of different types. It doesn't really uh, conflict with your deck that much. Phalanx um, only came up like twice to summon back the Legadia from the graveyard. Um, it's good as a one of, uh, you know, banish your Legadia, summon it back on the next standby phase. Legadia says when it's special summoned, you get to draw and then pop a monster uh, with the highest attack. It doesn't say synchro summon, so this triggers it. That's why summoning it from the grave is really good. Um, so yeah, Tikaboo just being a god card, like I said, against Flunder. Unchained, it's really good too. Um, game one, when I beat Flunder, I had Tikaboo up and I made final Sigma and he scooped. Like, there's just nothing he could do. Um, and then game two, like I said, I opened up Ash and Perm and I think I either drew or I opened with Tikaboo. Like, it was just disgusting. Um, Flunder is a really good matchup for this deck. So that's the main deck. 40 cards. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on into the extra deck here. I'm only playing two Legati. I feel like two's fine. The Phalanx kind of acts as a third because you can revive it from the grave. I don't feel like you need three. Um, this card's heart and soul of the deck, and if it's up on the field, uh, your level five, or, or excuse me, your monsters with 2,000 or less attack can't be destroyed by battle. So this can't be destroyed by battle when you bring it back with Phalanx because it loses 1,500 attack from the effect of the trap. So you just summon this out in defense. It can't be destroyed in battle. And if you have Premier in the back row, it can't be destroyed by battle by card effects. So yeah, that's cute. And every turn, it's getting you a Centurion into your grave back to your spell and trap zone, which I don't believe it targets. So, yeah, it's it's just an insane card. Uh, yeah, this this doesn't target when it uh, brings back from grave. So, just just a, an amazing, amazing synchro monster. Uh, and then the one Crimson Dragon, shout out to my friend that let me borrow this. Mine's actually an Ultron. It never came in the mail. I'm going to have to work on getting my refund. So, yeah, TCG player sellers not putting tracking on their stuff, I guess. Uh, and then one Ultra Rare King Calamity, because I'm also playing a common Cosmic Blazar to piss people off with the rarities. Um, I summoned King Calamity. I thought about it. And I summoned it not just match wise but games in general I believe it was like seven times that i summoned king calamity but um really it was the hand traps that backed it up because you don't want to play this against like labyrinth rescue ace like any kind of trap heavy deck because they could just set their back row and wait to get in the next turn cosmic blazar is really your go-to um against ace and labyrinth things like that it was actually interesting because uh in the last round against rescue ace um he activates feather duster pops my tikaboo i chain primera and trudea to summon those my stand-up stays because I have a monster up. Uh, I proceed to use Primera and Trudea, chain M at 6, put Trudea back in the back row, synchro into Crimson Dragon. I hold on to it. I don't shotgun it like an idiot again. I leave it on the field in defense, and he goes Lightning Storm, pop your attack with Legadia. I chain Crimson Dragon, since now he has a card on the field, target the Legadia. He chained uh, Emergency to summon Airlifter, sent Turbulence from hand, um, and then I bounce back the Crimson Dragon, Summon Blazar in defense because has a 4,000 ass, and then the Legadia died. And then meanwhile, I'm sitting with Droll and Valor and this on the board. And I have Bonds in hand from what I searched off the Primera. And I have a Trudea in back row for follow-up on the next turn. So, like, how do they win? His end board was double Turbulence and Black Witch. He goes Turbulence, I go Chain Valor. And then before that, he had done Wanted, banished it, put a card back in Draw, and I used Droll. So he's under Droll, I Valored his Turbulence, and he just passed his turn. Next turn, I switch it to Attack Mode, swung into his uh, Black Witch. He took 1,500. I proceeded to build a board because we were close to the end of time. 
we had an eight minute time extension because of the deck choke. So these cards are absolutely insane. Uh, and then of course, Final Sigma, this auto wins against Flunder and anything that can't deal with a 3000 unaffected. This card's insane. Uh, Valley D wanted me to cut this uh, for uh, Moon Maiden. And I was like, no, because you need to have a spellcaster up. If you don't have access to Primera, it's just dead. Other than that, the extra deck was mostly dead. Uh, One Dweller, never made it. Uh, One Baguska, never made it. Uh, Zeus, guess what I'm going to say? We never made it. <laughs> and then we did make Sky Crisis against the Infernoble player I should have beat. But other than that, it never came up. I would argue that this technically never came up because had I not misplayed, we would have won. Uh, and then One Little Knight, uh, this came up once because we did also make Dark Charmer against the Dragon Link player game too. Um, made Dark Charmer. Uh, may, and then took his Masquerina to have a Little Knight online. But um, other than that, it it didn't really come up. Uh, Lina never came up. Celine never came up. And then Access Code, again, never came up. It's something I could have done with the Masquerina in the Dark to make uh, Access Code. <coughs> but it just never came up. I almost wish that this was Underworld Goddess because, you know, being able to take an opponent's monster for a Link summon's pretty good. Uh, Celine, you can use it to get to Primera because Primera is a spellcaster and then Link off an Access Code. But these cards just never came up. Um, for the side deck, we're playing three Fenrir, and then we're also playing, uh, if I could find it here, uh, the one of Pankratops. So in a lot of my matchups, I was doing two Fenrir and Pankratops uh, because Pankratops is just better, I feel. Um, being able to summon this, attack into a monster, and then still in battle phase tribute to pop a card is really good. So you just side deck in these three, and then uh, from there, like you just have a really solid engine of like removal and you can side out things like non-engine, like Desires, Terraforming, the extra Emmet 6 since you're taking out Desires, Phalanx or Bonds as well, um, because they're not all that great going second. Possibly Tikaboos if they're not good going into the matchup. So the, the, these cards are just absolutely insane. I love these cards all day. Uh, three Nibiru. I side decked these in against Dragon Link, but I side decked in like 12 cards because I didn't really know what to side. And I kind of over, I oversided really, and it kind of hurt me, I think. But the Nibs never came up. Um, yeah, it just, it's good. It just never came up. Uh, three Shifter. I want to take these out. Um, the concept behind these is for tier, and then when I played against Chris LeBlanc, I realized it's for purely two. I forgot that that deck was a thing a little bit. Um, but Shifter, even though you don't really care about it as the Centurion player, you still want your day on Primera in the grave for Legadia because of the fact that you want to be able to get Primera into your back row with Legadia's effect. So even though it doesn't really hurt you all that bad to get Shiftered, um, it's not something I feel like the Centurion player themselves should play. I would rather have it been Bell, Lancia even, Crows, possibly Bysteels, or even Fantastical Dragon Fenamaze. And the reason why I say Fenamaze is because a lot of times, once players get hand trapped two, three times, however many hand traps we open, they end on a Little Knight. Well, Fenamaze outs Little Knight because it negates targeting. So you can summon the Fenamaze and then draw a card because they have a Link Monster up and then put one back. So... There's an argument to be made that there is a flex spot here with Shifter. You could still play Shifters if you want. It's definitely something I think you should only play going second. And then, of course, it does kill tier. Um, but it's it's something to note. You know, there are different things that you could play. And maybe, maybe even Skullmeister. I don't know if Skullmeister would really be the option, though. And then for our back row hate, we're playing Double uh, Lightning Storm and then Triple Cosmic Cyclone. Um, I Cosmic Cyclone the Simple Spoil Trap once. Other than that, these cards were just kind of like whatever. Um, it was, like I said, mostly just for like back row hate. But like since I went second like every game one, it was kind of like whatever. So like uh, they, they were just sort of there. Like they, they, were, they were cute. They were adorable. But that is our 10th place Centurion deck, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, I got to give a shout out to the Jacksonville Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Uh, you know, for them, just congratulating me and, and being supportive of me. And uh, I, I still can't believe that I came in 10th place. Been playing this game for years, and we finally got a 10th place finish, top 16. And we're going to Nationals, and it, it feels really, really freaking good. So, guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support, and I will see you in the next video.